Hello and welcome to The Drum. I'm Chris Yulman. Coming up, has Julia Gillard stolen Tony Abbott's welfare policy? Why Andrew Robb wants the federal police involved in the campaign? And look at me, why Kevin Rudd's new billboard is all about him. Our panel tonight, Chaz Lucadello from The Chasers, Yes We Canberra, former New South Wales leader, <laughs> Kerry Chikorowski, <laughs> and blogger and author, Anthony Lowenstein. Now, Good evening. Say all that five times fast. <laughs> I know. And if you and if any of you can Twitter those names and mine, getting the spelling correct, there's a yet to be identified drum prize to hand out at the end of this evening. But first, Labor's get tough welfare policy under the changes. Family benefits will be tied to mandatory health checks for children at the age of four, and job seekers will stop receiving the dole if they don't turn up for appointments. This is part of making the point very clearly uh, that people who can work should work. We expect compliance with obligations under our Centrelink and Job Services Australia system. The government will also provide financial assistance of up to $6,000 for unemployed Australians willing to relocate for a job, a policy the Liberals says is theirs. Julia Gillard stole Kevin Rudd's jobs. Now Julia Gillard is stealing Tony Abbott's policy. Well, the drum Steve Canane asked job seekers outside a Centrelink office in Sydney, the Sydney Liberal seat of Wentworth what they thought about the idea of welfare payments being cut off. Uh, what do you think about Julia Gillard's idea to kick people off welfare if they don't make their appointments? Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I mean, we've got to make an effort. We can't just be bludgers and just be lazy about it. We've got to be proactive. I think I agree with that. Well, well I think um, they've already been doing that anyway. So it's nothing... Unusual. Well, I think it's a bit foolish because there is just some times when people can't get to the appointments and they don't also have the ability to just call up and ring and say, look, I can't come in or anything like that. You know, they don't take that into their account. Julie Gillard's saying that 42% of the time people aren't making their appointments and that's not good enough. Well, all I can say is by me, I go to 100% of my appointments. It seems to be a little irresponsible for those people who would find it difficult to make it to an appointment on schedule. Why can't people make it to appointments? Why can't they turn up if... if why is there not an obligation to turn up if they're getting paid welfare? Well, I would say it's preferable to turn up. I mean, it seems to be the responsible thing to do. But, I mean, obviously there are various factors that would affect one's ability to make it to a centre. I mean, I mean if one is, is, is disabled or inconvenienced somehow, I can see how that would be a mitigating factor. I don't think that's particularly fair, considering not everybody has access to get to these services quite as easily as, um, yeah, everyone else. So maybe what happens if I'm disabled and I don't have any friends or family and I can't get there just as easily as someone who is able? Well, Kerry Tchikorovsky, is that policy theft? Well, certainly the uh, relocating allowance is theft. I think that uh, Tony announced something along those lines about six, min uh, six months ago. And uh, my recollection is that Paul Howes accused him of having a Sarah Palin slash Pauline Hanson moment when he was suggesting that people should go from areas of great employment to uh, areas of great unemployment. Mark Abib accused him of being, you know, bizarre policy, I think it was he said about it. So I'm kind of intrigued by the fact that um, Julia was saying earlier in the campaign that uh, Tony Abbott was agreeing with her, for example, on refugees. I think Tony should be very flattered that Julia Gillard is now agreeing with him about a policy such as this. Yeah, it's interesting too, guys, that, 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 that a lot of her policies, her education policies too, are a move to the right. Mm. Uh, oh, and can I just interrupt there? And if you actually go back and have a look at what um, Brendan Nelson was announcing uh, way back when, when he talked talked about um, education policy, I think you'll find that Julia obviously read that speech because a lot of what Brendan announced is now being, uh, is now being trotted out as Labor Party policy. Jess? Well, yeah, first of all, I, I, are we talking about when Tony Abbott announced that, that he thought that you should cut the dole for under 30s who don't go get jobs in the, in the bush? Because if we're talking about that, that's, I think that's a bit of a different policy, to be honest. That's, I, for a start, by the way, I like the fact we're talking about stealing policies because that means we're talking about policies, <laughs> which is a nice change. But, but, uh, but on that note, the, I think Tony Abbott took more the stick approach and this is more the carrot approach where you're actually giving the money. So I, to be fair, and also I also don't think that he actually announced that as a policy so much as it was kind of noodling in a sort of a Tony Abbott way. Oh, I think so, that's a little... Yeah, so, well, look, I'm not knocking him. I'm just saying that I'm not sure they're exactly the same thing. So like, I think it's a little bit like... Like me saying after Minority Report, you know, I, I really think it'd be great to have a touchscreen phone and then go, well, 
Steve Jobs, <laughs> you stole my iPhone, my dear. You know, like, I think, to be honest, as long as it's a good policy, I'm not saying that, that, they're, that they, they're not cribbing off each other a little bit because, let's face it, if it's a good idea... I think there was money like, involved. I, like I, think, yeah. I think there was yeah. money involved with Tony's policy. I think he was actually suggesting money to oh, okay. encourage right. them to... Well, like, like I said, I wasn't yeah. absolutely sure about that, but I do think that the important thing is whether the policy works. Mm. Like that's the, yeah, that's I think, exactly yeah. the point. I mean, you mentioned before, Chris, the idea that the Labor Party is moving further to the right to mimic what they perceive to be as, I guess, Abbott's ascendancy in terms of his policies. I mean, the question is, Chaz, is, you know, is this actually going to work? We've seen the US and the UK attempts in the last few decades to try similar kind of policies. Sometimes they've failed spectacularly. I mean, one also looks even the local case here, the Northern Territory intervention, where there's been attempts at kind of welfare regulation. In many cases, it actually hasn't worked to achieve the goals both the Howard government and Rudd government and now Gillard government wanted to achieve. So, Stealing policies, I don't think the electorate really cares if it's one policy over another. You know, I mean, on so many issues, they're so similar. Mm. That the but question... it is mutual obligation, isn't it, Kerry? That's oh, essentially the, 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 the driving philosophy is that. Which is very much sitting on the side of the Conservatives. They've always been advocating mutual obligation. And, uh, yeah. and you know, it, and it is being adopted, uh, as you say, around mm. the world. But um, it comes back to a policy which was, you know, under the Howard government, it was all about mutual obligation. It was yeah. about saying that you can't just expect a handout from you know, cradle to grave without actually making a contribution back, you know, earning something from it. And I think it's really interesting because Tony and, and, um, and Joe Hockey have been constantly talking about the need to get participation rates up for under 30s. I mean, that's been something that it's not just today. I mean, he's been talking about that for a while. So their emphasis has been we actually ne need to make sure that young people are engaged in work and we need to have policies which do that. So you, be, you won't be surprised to say that I'm delighted that the Labor Party has <laughs> no, finally come no, around no, to no, our no, way of thinking. No, no. <laughs> if, um, if I just ask, well, men mention one thing, and that is that, look, I don't think there are many people who have a problem with the idea of someone who just never turns up mm. to, to Centrelink, just you know, them having some kind of discipline or something, like having some kind of mutual obligation. Mm. Mm. But the question I'd like to ask is rather than having some kind of mandatory policy where, you know, it's if this happens, then this happens, if this happens, then this happens. It's punitive. Yeah, it rather than having something like yeah. I'd, I'd be more interested in knowing why these people not turn up. Because you don't have a situation where people, almost their job is to just fulfil their new start obligations. <laughs> and they, like, if mm. you have a... You want, you, if you have a situation where people actually are incentivised to try and get a job, that's a, than... that's a conservative word too. Yes, yeah, so yes, you're dragging I it out now. Incentivised. Yeah, yeah. Your word. See now well, it's, it's catching. It's oh, like I'm a big just disease. For real action. <laughs> that's all I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Someone from the chaser using a conservative He's word. Moving forward. He's and moving and forward. you know the thing was, he didn't even know he was. I know. So you're winning by still. Oh, no, we are. We're actually taking over the world. Mm. <laughs> but of course, one of the things also we should say, though, I mean, during the Howard years, there was what was often termed middle-class welfare. In other words, there were so many groups in society who often did need money or assistance. That's true. Often given during election campaigns or even without the election campaign. So the idea somehow this is as Kerry was suggesting, just a Labor Party thing. This is happening across the board, mm. across both parties. It's not new. Yeah. Mm. I think the whole word, by the way, was incentivation. <laughs> so you're use part of it. You're a little... Halfway yeah. there. Little time there. <laughs> Give me another six months, it'll pop there. out, and you another, won't even another know. Two, no, well, ten more days in an election campaign, we'll have you over into the side <laughs> yeah. of it, guys. And Tony Abbott said the most conservative thing you could do is have a family, so that's next. <laughs> the ALP's other key announcement today was the resurrection of the rail link between Parramatta and Epping in Sydney's northwest. Julia Gillard has promised more than $2 billion in federal funding. That will have many local residents rolling their eyes. It's a project the New South Wales Labor government first promised in 1998 and since then it's been constantly delayed and then dumped, a fact that Tony Abbott was quick to jump on. The people of Western Sydney know that Labor has form here. Uh, big promises before an election, broken promises after an election. Uh, all that you get delivered is glossy brochures but no infrastructure. Well, Anthony, they seem to know what they're talking about there because the Vox Pops that we saw on the rail yeah. station were precisely that. Well, will it ever happen? And you can't blame New South Wales voters to be disillusioned with the Labor government here because they're a disaster. But in some ways, I think actually I'm going to take the side of, of what the government's trying to do here. The theory of it is good. 
Over the last sort of 10 years, we've seen more and more investment in roads and actually not in public transport. Public transport is, if we believe in any kind of sustainability, that word is often used and abused. That's what we need to move forward on a better expression. Oh, yeah. I'm writing these down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could have all been brainwashed. You do nothing but watch well, television. I, I, I Moving think Julia's forward. stolen my, my term. But <laughs> no, the idea that you know, public transport sh you know, should be investment in that. And I think the idea of a, of a better train system is good. Whether this is actually ever going to happen, who the hell knows, clearly. <laughs> And it's not unfair that people are sceptical about it, but the idea, I would argue, in fact, is a good one. No one, no one is going to argue against public transport. I mean, that's just a given. And, Some and, do. And, oh, in New South Wales in particular and in oh. Sydney and, the, and in the west of Sydney, there is not a single person who lives out there, there's not a single person who's a politician yeah. now or who would potentially be a politician in the future who's going to argue about the need for, um, for you know, public, public transport in the western Sydney. The problem is, this particular project was dropped by the New South Wales government earlier this year. Yeah. They said it wasn't a priority. They said, oh no, we've got other more important things we're going to look at. And so you go, why, if it wasn't a priority to the government a few months ago, why would anyone suddenly believe that it's a priority now? I reckon if you actually took all the um, reports, all the media releases, all the bits and pieces of paper around public transport announcements in New South Wales in, um, in, uh, in this, you know, in, since not, for the last 16 years almost, since the Labor government has come in, you could probably solve the, um, the carbon problem because yeah. there have been so many trees cut down to produce all those things and no result. You could probably build a paper no train line from Epping yeah. to, you could to Paramount. You could have. <laughs> Darwin for that. Look, I've got to say, of, of, uh, of all the... Of all the worlds in which this rail line might happen, this is probably the one that's most likely happening because it almost doesn't involve the New South Wales government. Yeah. <laughs> like they're chipping in a tiny little bit of money and the rest is coming from the federal government. So maybe, just maybe, it might happen this time. But it's not going to come about until if the Gillard elect gets ele if Gillard gets elected this time, that's the second term, and it's not really going to happen until a third term election. So why would people think that? Well, look, why would people think it's actually going to happen? Can we also make a happen? request made that politicians don't appear with hard hats? So this is oh. Oh. <laughs> no. Because you know, you can't ask if, that, if you either on television news, and those pictures are very valuable. Yes, oh, right. I love need, politicians. Yeah, silly it hats. makes them look serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes them look serious. I've got to say, I think while Labor politicians are campaigning in Western Sydney, they should wear hard hats because a lot of people <laughs> want to have a go at them. <laughs> that could be the point. Maybe we're missing the actual reason why they're wearing hard hats. It was. It was actually a safety reason. <laughs> Absolutely. But why can't we do rail? Why can't we do public infrastructure properly, particularly in Sydney? What's oh. the problem? Well, you need to have some political will, that's the first thing, because you're actually going to decide which is the priority, uh, because everybody puts their hand up and says. And, you know, I, I heard that uh, there was a text message in from Barry O'Farrell saying that's not their priority. Northwest sector, southwest sector are going to be their priority. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it, because the southwest sector has been designated a growth area for you know, housing and population, as has the northwest sector. So you would think that putting a heavy rail line into those two areas should be a priority. So I think, first of all, you need to have a government which which is going to prepare to say, we will commit to a project and this is what it's going to be. And then you've got to work out how you're going to fund it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to say, I think the reason why is because you pay the money now and you get the benefit in three terms time, mm. which means we will never have a train line built ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think if you're actually serious about the planning of Sydney and the growth in Sydney and everyone, you know, the one thing I think people are agreed on, whether you have mm -hmm. a big Australia or a 